Okay. Um, this is Dr. Storms up in one of the research labs, and I just want to briefly show you the GC mass spec, which stands for gas chromatograph mass spectrometer, that you'll be using in the course of semester. You probably won't get your hands on this instrument right here, but I want you to have a little bit of familiarity with it. And if you're really curious, you can ask your instructor, and this being Glimmar, your instructor will bring you up and probably let you run your own sample, or at least explain it to you. There's only one, and because there's only one, um, it's impossible for every student to run it each day. Okay, just getting familiar with the station. This is the computer that runs the instrument, right here. The street screen, the keyboard, this is the printer for the instrument. Um, this part right here is the gas chromatograph, okay, and it's really not very different from the gas chromatograph that you use downstairs in that it, it contains a column, you inject your samples into the column, and your compounds separate on that column. This is really a big oven, and if I open it, I might get in trouble when I'm going to open it. This is our phone now, so it's red. So I'm opening it very briefly. If you look inside, that very, very, very thin wire is the column. So look at that column compared to your column. Think about it. It's a lot longer and it's a lot thinner. One uh, repercussion of that is that you're going to have to shoot in much less sample because it's a very thin column. The fact that it's very long, though, is going to enable you to separate compounds that are much closer in structure. And this could include isomers and even, in one case this semester, stereoisomers. Okay? So this is a big oven. It's got a column in it. And you just have to shoot your sample into that column. Okay? How is this done? This is a robotic instrument. So what I'm going to show you in the next video is how to prepare one of these samples for injection into the instrument. And the way this instrument works is you put your sample in a particular slot, you prepare the sample in a particular way, and you give the, the instrument commands as to where the sample is and how you want to run the sample, for how many minutes, what temperature you want to go up to. By the way, this can go up to very, very high temperatures, so you can actually run solids in the gas phase. And when you tell it exactly what, when you program it properly, and it's easy to do, this tray rotates around, and this arm reaches over, picks up the sample, and puts it into this part of the instrument. And if you peek in there really close, you can see there is a syringe inside that area. There's a syringe right in here. Okay, it's a little hard to see. And what it does is exactly what you do. It picks up solvents from these vessels and cleans out the syringe. Then it turns, your sample goes underneath the syringe, your sample's picked up by the syringe. It actually pumps the way you pump to get the air out. Then it picks up your sample, loads it into the instrument. The injection port for the instrument is right underneath this, this robotic apparatus. And then it's shot right into the column. And when it goes into the column, it's separated very much the same way as our gas chromatographs downstairs. Now what makes the big difference with this instrument is this has a different detector. It has a very, very special detector. And the detector is right here. And this de detector is a mass spectrometer, okay? And what happens is as soon as your sample comes off the column, it goes right onto this mass spectrometer. And the compound is bombarded with an electron beam that des basically destroys the molecule. The molecule gets hit with electrons, electrons are ejected, and it becomes a cation. And, the, the fragment, and then that cation just starts to fragment. And what's really interesting about organic molecules, and you're going to learn about this this semester, is that organic cations fragment in very characteristic ways. In other words, there are mechanisms for this kind of high energy um, High, this sort of high energy um, de 
detection, this high energy chemistry, because it's really high energy chemistry, right? In the lab, we don't take our molecules and bombard them with electrons. That's not the kind of chemistry we do. But in here, the molecules, are, as they come off the column, boom, hit with the electrons, becomes a cation. The cation starts falling apart. And then all the fragments are detected. And then you put the molecule back together like a puzzle. Because an aromatic molecule fragments in a certain way. An alcohol fragments in a certain way. Um, a ketone fragments in a certain way. And you're going to learn how they fragment, and you're going to learn how to interpret these spectra. This method can be used to determine the molecular mass of a compound. So you might always wonder, how do we know what the mass of a compound is? How do we know the formula of a compound today, in 2010? You know, Back in the old days, they did combustion analysis. What do we do? We usually do a mass spectral analysis. So the thing I want you to get out of this is it's the same as what you've been doing. Injection, but through a robotic process. Separation on a column in an oven. Very much like what you've done. But instead of just detecting the compounds with a thermal conductivity detector, as we did in the fall, you're going to be detecting the compounds using a spectroscopic technique. And I always say to students, wouldn't it be cool if you could shoot your samples into a GC, and, have it, and, and the, when the sample separated out, have it go right into an NMR spectrometer, right? If, if you could do that, you could identify every component of your mixture as it's formed. That's what this does. But it's just a new type of spectroscopy. And when you learn the spectroscopy, you can identify compounds just as well as with an NMR. Okay, so in class, you're going to get all the theory behind this. But I want you to think of it as a basic separation technique followed by a sophisticated analytical technique. Okay? So the next video is going to cover how to make the sample. Making the sample is very important because this gas chromatograph is very sensitive to quantity. And if you overload it, you will damage it. Last year we had a little damage to this thing. So this year we're going to be super careful about the way we make up samples. And when we make up the sample, if you think there's, I'm going to say this like 20 times, but if you think there's something wrong with that sample, you have to remake it, throw it out and remake it because you cannot overload this machine. And the way they're going to be run is we're going to put, you know, the whole class of samples in and they're going to be run robotically overnight. So you can't put a crappy sample in the middle of this, this run, okay? So next video will be how to make a sample. So you can cut it. Thanks.